in the beginning of the first quarter of the 20th century, in 1923 to be precise, the Ghani family, the renowned Paris publishers, built Le Chateau La Croix en A in Normandy, France. Fast forward almost a hundred years to 2019, and my two friends sold everything they had to buy the chateau. How sad and unloved it looked after many years abandoned. There was so very much to do, from knocking down wall to dancing to the gramophone. I'd love you to join Miss Anna and Peter as they take you on a journey to make the chateau truly splendid again. love all those renovation projects. Come and join them. With an insight into their life in France, show you around, old sport. Part one. Uh, what, for spiders? New, new projects. Ah, oh. <laughs> we'll be okay. Get all anxious and go all foggy. Uh, it's okay, it's a, it's a manageable project, isn't it? Yeah. So it's just, it's, this is just the small landing uh, onto the first floor bedroom, onto the first floor bedrooms. So? Oh, are we on? <laughs> so? First floor landing. Let's take you through some of the jobs. Get my bum. <laughs> <laughs> some of the jobs we've got to do, and uh, we'll hopefully have this one done quickly. <laughs> so we've got a few doors off this landing. We've got uh, one door into a uh, hallway. Into the bedroom. Just through there, into a bedroom. Uh, sorry, into the bedrooms. And then we've got toilet door. a toilet door, toilet cubicle door, um, bathroom, a bathroom, and the bedroom, one of the bedrooms. It so was, it was closed off, wasn't it? It was. Let's just have a look. Let's just have a look to see what the previous owners thought would be a good use of that little. They've got a mini hallway into the first ensuite bedroom. Mm. Little mini hallway. And just have a look. Let's have a look what the owners did to that. Well this one was it was locked, wasn't it? It was locked. It was locked. This is the first time today that we've un locked it. <laughs> they actually built a wardrobe. An MDF wardrobe. A beautiful MDF wardrobe. Which you can see we've been using as a bit of an emergency but that's just going to be moved today. This door here is going to go, so we're going to take this door out, take the alcatraz off, and then put up a frame inside, plasterboard that, bring that flush in with the uh, wall here. So we're going to revert access to the bathroom through the little mini uh, hallway here. And then finally here, just with the doors, the doors have got to be re-glossed. Unfortunately, all of these doors have this beautiful, I don't know if we can still see it, this beautiful wood full, full bois wood effect but the previous owners together with this beautiful brown uh, the paint is straight on top straight on top so you won't be able to see it on the camera here but here's the line but they had the false panelling below it's such a shame you can't ever get that back uh, so we're just going to have to make good
Now, some of you might be saying, that's a lot of plaster going up on there. And you're right, normally it would only be kind of that thick. But here's the problem. Uh, in the wall is timber, uh, which goes either side of the door frame up to the floor above. And so the door frame itself is actually a timber structure with an infill of concrete and then a skim of plaster over the top of that. So the problem we've got is um, the plaster meets timber. So I've got one timber here, another timber coming down here. Then I've got the fill for the plasterboard and then obviously the plasterboard itself. So it means on this side, I've got quite a bit of rubbing down to do, which I don't mind. Uh, but for those that thought, oh, he's put too much on, uh, hopefully that, that explains why. We've got, to, we've got to get it all level with the existing uh, plasterwork. So this is the hallway into four bedrooms on this floor. This door has been put in um, sometime after the house was built. Now it might have something to do with the accommodation um, during the war when this was used to, for the occupying forces. We still need to find that out. But this is not very well put in. This, this is the original line of the opening here. This architrave here is the original line, and the opening would have gone all the way to the ceiling. I don't quite know what would have been up on the, on the uh, top on the fan light, but it would have gone all the way up to the top. And then later on sometime, somebody has put this in, and they've done a terrible job of putting this frame in here, and then this door in afterwards, with another lock on the back, which is well, why we're thinking this might have something to do with the accommodation. So I'm gonna take this out. So we're just in the middle of this project and a small packet has arrived for Miss Anna, a little present. And it's just arrived. So we're stopping work, I'm having a cup of tea. It's a pony. It's a small pony at Shetland. <laughs> My little pony. Shoes. <laughs> How 
cool are they? They're like little Dorothy shoes. They've got a lace missing. Look at them. Aww. Little tap shoes. Is there not two pairs on there? It's two pairs on there. Oh, good. Uh, sorry, one pair on there. So we have this rather unsightly opening now that we need to do something about. And I originally wanted just to repair the corners and reinstate the skirting board at the bottom there. But uh, Anna said, oh, please can we have, please can we have, please can we have some pillars either side. So the challenge of these pillars on this corner, on this corner here, literally falling apart. So we need to cover them. So we need to find something that will return around the corner. So what I was thinking about is um, perhaps, I don't know if this is going to come out, um, perhaps something like this, either side of the door. This isn't a scale at all. Um, in fact, they're slightly too big. That's the, the ground there. So this is the this is this hallway here. It's going down there. And to have these um, to have these wrap around and have like a buttress on either side coming down like this, and then on the top put some crown mouldings up, but again, wrap around the corner, and then perhaps even put a little frame in uh, inside the panel itself on this side, perhaps do something here. So um, I then wouldn't mind capping that off um, with something a little bit fancy. So some kind of um, detail at the top. I haven't really thought about that. So I've got some dreaded MDF. I'm going to have a go at seeing if we can just frame that up on here and see what that would look like. Um, and then if it works, uh, we just then need to paint that in, probably a gloss. Um, paint that in, maybe give it some, um, maybe give the uh, framing some uh, gold highlights. But let's have a look, let's see how that would look.
disgusting dogs. That's a very good point, actually. <laughs> Hang on a minute. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> Yay! Oh, God. <laughs> That's a lot, isn't it? Let's take it apart and do it again. Think about icing a wedding cake then. If that was a wedding cake, you obviously didn't like the bride and the groom. <laughs> That's pretty, isn't it? That is pretty. And then a piece of it on the bottom there and the same on the other side. Finishes. And Anna had an inspired idea that we run that trim along there. Yep. Along there. Yep. Along. Oh. Along there. Along there. And also at the bottom, yeah? And at the bottom there. Yeah. Because the, the effect of depth. Give us a bit of depth to it, wouldn't it? it should be a bit 3D. For the skirting board, I'm going to reuse, if you remember, this piece of trim went around the old opening. It's quite nice, um, it's certainly uh, reusable, it's not wormed or anything. So uh, I'm going to run that around the bottom of the, the pillar and then to start our mouldings around here, um, we found this. This is, uh, this is oak um, and it's a bit, if you can see that, it's a bit twisty. Uh, but we're only going to be using lengths sort of like this uh, to go around the top of the pillar. So I'm going to need two long lengths and a small length, and then hopefully we'll have enough to do the stuff at the top. So I love that because we're reusing some of the old timber.
Okay, so we're just waiting for that filler to dry. Um, we've also run out of um, timber for uh, these infill panels, so we're going to put the same detailing as on these bottom ones. That is going to go on to these uprights as well. Uh, but I think I have got enough timber to do, or to, at least to start, um, the crossbar or the, the sort of fake lintel over the top. So let's have a look at that and see how that goes.
this is how far we've got now. So of course, some pillars. Um, perfect people do some perfect trims. You might paint some gold. You might do white and gold, not sure yet. Um, the look up there, look. Mm -hmm. Nice trims. And this is the picture I on. That was from the frame. We used the frame from the dark in the picture. So it's good to rail. Um, not quite the size of its wallpaper to use yet. I'm going to do half wall pieces of wallpaper on there, they go rail and paint. But I like this wallpaper too, one. Nice art deco flavour to it with the gold flecks in it. I like that one a lot. I'm not going with that one, that's my favourite one. There's a discontinued line there, we've only got two rolls. <laughs> Touch and go. <laughs> we'll see. Right, that's the end of part one. So in part two, we're going to put in all the beading rail up. Papering maybe, not very good at papering. Painting. We've got a ceiling to do, which we've come up with a very fancy pattern for the ceiling. So in the next video, if it seems it's very prickly pattern, it's worked. If not, it didn't work. <laughs> See you in part two. Please help my good friends. Press like and subscribe to stay tuned for further adventures. All support.